mind the gap when entering and leaving the train. My love for music stems back into my parents' basement. My dad, you know, has and still has a pretty, pretty amazing and diverse record sele selection. My first lesson was from my hockey coach, funny enough. I remember he had me play along with records. You know, he put on a Billy Idol record and just had me keep a beat, you know, a simple beat. Didn't let me do anything fancy, because, you know, when you're, you know, when you're first playing, you want to play, like, you know, everything that you possibly can play on the drums. You're like, no, just play time. I didn't want to play two and four on the snare, one and three on the kick drum, eighth notes on the hi-hat. Mark sits on that line where he can like, sit back and forth and either take control and let things kind of sit back, but always, always with that energy and dedication to time and musicality. My brother and I used to make drums in the basement. Like, we'd use, like, paint cans or, like, an old pizza box, and we'd, you know, we'd drum on that kind of stuff. Tear everything away down to the bass elements. He feels time like no other drummer that I've played with. What's in store for today? What will come my way? I will play the game. The biggest the influence star. on me as a musician actually happened in 1995. And I saw a drummer called Brian Blade, and he was playing drums the way I'd never heard drums being played before. Like it was, it was like this really dynamic intensity and it was mixed with joy and passion. And I just, it was just like, wow. I never knew the drums could sound like that. The coolest experience I think with Mark is when I saw him at Royal Albert Hall with George Michael. And, you know, first of all, I was so jealous because that's the one place I haven't played yet that I'd love to play. But just hearing him play and bringing his own feel and swing to what, what they were doing was amazing. I think one of the both groundbreaking things where I really saw Mark Shine was playing for a Quincy Jones tribute he did, uh, top of 2000. Just hearing Mark's pocket through it all, it, it, his versatility made him an individual that stood out to me. Yeah, I think the, my favorite per person I've worked with has got to be Phil Ramone. I met Phil in 2003 when I was new in New York and I was working with a vocalist named Peterson Cotty and Phil Ramone was producing his record and Phil took a leg to my playing and really got behind me on a lot of things. He recommended me for Gladys Knight's record. Uh, I did Dionne Warwick's last record and he also recommended me for the George Michael tour and album. Right is the first record that I've written music and lyrics. So it was a nice experience. I think since maybe 2006, I've been starting to write music and lyrics. I'd known Mark as an amazing drummer, but I didn't even know he was a composer until, I, until the Feeling All Right album. And I was blown away by his songs. His respect for music is evident in how he plays. He's involved into a multi-instrumentalist and, and involved into a producer. It was, it was very exciting to just come in and, and sing his tunes. Sometimes, you know, I kind of forget that Mark's this killer drummer. He's this great songwriter and arranger. Yeah, when you're trying to make the, the, uh, the transition from a, you know, a side man to a front man or an artist, I think for me a lot of the challenge was just mental because you're not used to being the focus of attention. It's exciting because I see that things are percolating and I see that he's definitely wanting to explore a lot of musical territory. I can see Mark doing a lot more composing, a lot more songs for his own albums and for other artists. So, you know, he'll be busy for a long time. I think that Mark has already established that his future is, uh, it really has no ceiling. It allows you to be seen in a totally different light. Like you're not only a drummer now, you're a, you're a, you're a songwriter, you're a composer. Moving forward, I would like writing to be a daily thing. And it would, honestly, it'd be great to walk out and sing some songs as well. 
They don't be part of that. Step to the front of the stage. You know, if you want to meet women, you know, don't play chess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, my God.